the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm about to share some information with you that is basic and yet foundational. Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was a Jewish man. I think sometimes we forget that, but it's important we remember it because he drew on the scripture and the imagery of his Jewish tradition for his preaching and his teaching. In the gospel offered today, Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, Jewish leaders of his time. The imagery of the good shepherd is prominent in the Hebrew scriptures and particularly in the prophetic voice of Ezekiel in chapter 34, verses 1 through 31. It also shows up in Jeremiah 36. Ezekiel prophesied in the late 6th century BCE during the time of the Babylonian exile. As a result of poor leadership from self-serving kings, the Israelite people had experienced the destruction of their homes, the tearing apart of their families, some staying in Judea, some being carried off to Babylon, where they were separated from the temple, the very place at that time the people believed where God resided. Ezekiel offers what is called an oracle of restoration, a message of hope for people trying to imagine their post-exilic life. We can infer that Jesus' audience knows the story of the Babylonian exile. It is steeped in their being just like the exodus from Egypt. We can also infer and and know that they have a deep understanding of the metaphor of the good shepherd. So from personal experience, Ezekiel outlines the behavior of bad shepherds. Bad shepherds care about themselves more than they do their sheep. They do not bind up the wounded. They do not seek out the lost sheep. They do not strengthen the weak and they rule harshly. Ezekiel also shares to the dispersed people of Judea God's message to them. I will search for my lost sheep. I will gather them up and bring them home to rich pastures. I will bind up the wounded. I will strengthen the weak. Herein lies restoration. Yahweh, God, is the good shepherd. So when 500 years later, Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd, he is claiming that he is the fulfillment of God's promise to gather up God's people. And more than that, to lay down his very life for the people. This was a bold and to many blasphemous claim. But for those who knew Jesus, for those who loved Jesus, and for us today, it is an oracle of restoration. In some ways, we are living in a time of exile. We need to be shepherded home by Christ. We need healing from many things, including the decline in participation in organized religion, the result of a number of complex factors a loneliness epidemic which has serious implications for our individual and our societal health, and which, by the way, is likely connected to a lack of participation in faith communities. Sadly, we have lost some of our standing we faith communities in promoting the well-being of our communities. And of course, we have a deep cultural divide that makes it difficult for us to find spaces that are hospitable to diverse opinions and experiences. And so in the backdrop of all of this pain, it may be helpful to remember our place now as followers of Christ. So let's go back just a second. God promises, I will be your shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, or 
I am God. Jesus dies and is resurrected. He sends the Holy Spirit, thus the birth of the church at Pentecost. We are inheritors of the tradition. We are the body of Christ. How might we, as the body of Christ, respond to the current sense of exile? One thing that comes to mind is how important it is for us to listen for Christ's voice in a way to be good sheep. I'm sure in many ways that we are because, hey, we're here today, so thank you. But how about Monday through Saturday? How do we listen for Christ's voice in our lives each and every day? As the body of Christ, we are tasked, we have a task that says we are rest to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. So to do that, we must start with ourselves, deepening our own connection to the source. And then, from that Christ-filled place of sacrificial love, we participate in the gathering, the binding, the strengthening, the seeking. For the sheep in this pen, and for one another. So yes, we do. With God's help, we take care of the sheep right here, our own St. Stephen's community. And I want to commend you as one who has been the recipient of your beautiful and compassionate and generous hearts. Thank you. You are a beautiful community of generous lover of souls. And after listening to God, we turn to the sheep that are not in this fold. People who may never be a part of this fold, but will always be a part of Christ's fold. Jesus is our model in this. He said, I have other sheep. How did he interact with those who were not Jewish? How was he impacted by those whom he encountered from outside the fold? The truth is, whenever we have a real sense of encounter, a genuine exchange, there is always giving and receiving and receiving and giving, even for Jesus, fully human, fully God. Three stories come to mind of Jesus' interaction with those outside of his community. The first is the Roman centurion. He had a gravely ill servant. I'm sure you remember him. Jesus healed, healed the servant from afar and was amazed by the centurion's faith. The second, the Syrophoenician woman begging for crumbs and proclaiming her faith. After a rocky start, let's say, Jesus heals her daughter and some believe for Jesus, this was the beginning of his human understanding of a mission beyond the Jewish people. And then we have the woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. Jesus seeing her, listening to her, challenging her, offering her living water. Both were moved by the encounter and she became the conduit for the transformation of an entire community. Jesus leads with relationship, and those he meets encounter the healing of divine love. Jesus embodies invitation, not coercion. This parish lives out the tradition of binding, healing, and seeking. And we never do this work alone. Our God is with us always in the valleys and in the mountaintops. We can take great comfort and strength from that. One new way we are living out our mission is supporting the still forming vision of the Threshold Center to be a gate for encountering a deeper relationship with God, with ourselves, and with one another. Ours is a world that is hurting for Christ's healing and sadly, many of those wounds have been inflicted by the church. 
We all desire wholeness, the integration of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our very souls with something more beautiful, more expansive than just ourselves. Housed across the street at St. John's Chapel, the Threshold Center is a complement to what St. Stephen's is already doing. It is a fresh desire to reach out to those who may never enter a church, but yearn for community and connection to the sacred. Based on the experience of similar centers around the country, some will likely find their ways here with, with us in the pews, and others may not. But if we live into our mission, all, all will know Christ's healing love by crossing the threshold into an inviting, imaginative, and trustworthy space. We have wrestled with the name of this new center. I'll be straight with you about that. I love the name, the Threshold Center, so I'm just gonna claim it, okay? I believe it fits with how we are inviting people to cross into a new third space, an open gate, if you will. We are waiting for the Spirit to affirm our choice and serve up a fabulous descriptive tagline. So hop on it if you want. I found an interview with the late Irish poet, priest, and author John O'Donohue very helpful. He describes a threshold as a line that separates two territories of spirit. If we cross a threshold worthily, O'Donohue says, we experience an emerging fullness, a greater sense of grace and elegance, a deeper sense of depth, and also, listen to this, a homecoming for the rich memory of the unfolding of our life. A homecoming for the rich memory of the unfolding of our life. That sounds like healing to me. The Threshold Center is an inreach. This isn't just for people outside the St. Stephen's community. It's for us too, thank God. And an outreach ministry, which will nurture wholeness for individuals and communities through connection, meeting people where they are, and respectfully sharing stories with hearts willing to be moved. Imagination, accessing the enlivening and healing spirit of creative expression. And so importantly, spiritual practices grounded in the wisdom of the tradition. We have an abundance of riches and and space and resources, and most importantly, beautiful, generous, loving hearts. I thank God that St. Stephen's is a beacon of hope. We are truly a beacon of hope. Actually, a living oracle of restoration. We can claim that. We are supporting a multitude of responses to the needs of our brothers and sisters. I'm energized by our embarking on a brave and life-giving new ministry. As we endeavor to shepherd and love one another in the greater community, we open ourselves to co-create with the Good Shepherd, the very healing of the world. It starts with you. It starts with me listening, listening for the shepherd's voice and following where it leads us and then bravely inviting others to follow. Amen.